Hi uh, guys, Mike here from Com3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part four of our first person controller series. So in the last video, we added jump functionality to our controller. This time, we're gonna add crouching. Now, this one's probably gonna be one of the longer videos in the series, but we'll see why very shortly. And I know you all just wanna get straight into it, so first things first, I'm just gonna thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter, go check out his website, keep up to date with all the good stuff that he's doing. And I also just wanna thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys, you guys are fantastic. So just like before, let's have a look at what we've already got. We've got basic movement, we can sprint, and now after last video, we can jump up this platform. But now we're stuck again. We can't actually get through this area. We need to crouch. So let's open up our script and let's get coding. So the first thing I'm going to do this time is I'm going to define all the variables and parameters that we need. So again, we're going to add in a new header, and this is going to be our crouch parameters. Just before we go into this, I hope you guys are actually enjoying seeing how I do this, because this is pretty much the first person controller that I use in my own games now. So not only is it giving you the tutorial, it's giving you like a sneak peek into how I actually code in my own day-to-day -day life because it's a lot harder to do tutorials and actually show how I lay out my code because usually it's just a quick code snippet or a single script. But yeah, let me know in the comments if this kind of format is actually working for you. So let's just add a few comments in here with what we actually want our crouch to be able to do. So first of all, we want to set how high our character should be when they're crouching, so our crouch height. Next, we want to add in a variable for what our actual standing height should be as well for when we release crouch. We want a bool to check if we are actually crouching, so is crouching. We want another bool to check whether or not we're actually mid-crouch, so if we're during the crouch animation and we release crouch, we want to cancel that animation and then continue back up to standing from wherever we left off. We also want to know how long it's going to take our character to go from standing to crouching or crouching to standing. So that's going to be time to crouch or stand. And the next two are actually going to be vector 3s. Now you may be thinking it's a bit strange to have a vector 3 during a crouch animation, but let me show you why. So if we jump over to our character controller and have a look at the actual character controller component on our character controller, we can see we have this center option right here. And currently we haven't used this, but basically what it is, it's the actual center point of your first person controller. So currently we are at zero, zero, zero. And if we move this up, we see that our box collider actually moves up with it, or our capsule collider rather. And the reason we need to amend our center point when we're crouching is because we're gonna amend our height. And if we lower the height down, you can see that our camera doesn't actually move with it. So our collider may shrink, but our camera won't look like we're crouching. But if we shrink our height down and then increase our center point, we see we can recenter that camera to a more valid eye line. Now that may be a little bit confusing, but you'll see that in action as we're coding this. So we pop back over to it. our script. We're gonna need our standing center point and also our crouching center point. So let's start adding these in. So we can copy one of these variables because again, they're gonna be serialized private fields. We'll call that crouch height. And I want this to be 0.5 units for crouch. We may change this later, but let's just give it a starting point. Next, we'll add in our standing height, which is gonna be two units. And let's move these booleans to the bottom because these aren't actually going to be serialized these are just private reference variables for inside the script so now we have our time to crouch and i'm just going to set this to 0.25 now here's our center points so that's going to be a private vector 3 serialized again and i'm just going to call this crouch in center and we're going to set that to a new vector 3 and we're going to keep it as 0 on the x we're going to have it as 0 0.5 on the y and 0 on the z and now we need to reverse all that by having our standing center be back to 
vector3.0 in essence. So really we don't need that property because we could just use vector3.0, but again, it just gives you that extra bit of customization inside the inspector. And then we need a private bool is crouching and another private bool during crouch animation. Perfect, so we've got all of our parameters set up. Let's add in a control key for this, which will be crouch key. And I'm gonna use left control for my crouch key. And this is where the fighting's gonna start because I know some people use left control, some people use the C key. But this is where having it in the inspector comes in handy because you can just go in and select whichever key you like. Now we wanna add crouching to our functional options. So can crouch and we're going to set that to true by default and let's handle crouching the same way as we're handling jump we'll create a new method called private void handle crouch and inside of our update we'll only run that if we can crouch so now you can start to see how useful it is adding these kind of feature toggles for different things like jumping and crouching so let's keep in with the theme of using these kind of properties to determine whether or not we should perform a specific action Let's create another one. I'll put up at the top, private bool should crouch. Add our lambda. And what do we need this time? Well, obviously, we're going to check our input. We're going to check for get key down. And we're going to check for our crouch key. We also want to make sure that we're not already mid crouch or mid stand. So we can check and we are not using the exclamation mark right there during our crouch animation. And we also want to check that our character controller is grounded because we can't crouch in mid-air. So now if we hop back down to our handle crouch method, what we're going to do, we're going to check if we should crouch, we'll perform our crouch action. And the way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to use a core routine. So we'll just write this in at the start and then add the core routine in just a second. So that's going to be start core routine, crouch, stand because this one core routine is gonna perform both actions for crouching and standing. There's no need to have two different ones, one for crouching, one for standing. So let's add in a private IE numerator, make sure we are using the system.collections namespace, and that's gonna be crouch stand. Now, as we're coding this, this may start to look a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna try my best to actually explain what each individual thing is doing, but the function that we're going to write inside here can be used in loads of different places because what we're going to do, we're going to lerp from one value to another over a set amount of time. So in this instance, we're obviously going to be lerping our height and our character controller's center point to actually match our crouching stance or vice versa. We're going to try and get back to our standing stance. But the same kind of code could be used for lerping between any two values. So let's get started on this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to tell our controller that we're during our crouch animation. So during crouch animation, we're going to set to true. And then right at the end, we're going to set that back to false. Next, we have a few parameters that we need to set up for our target height, our target center, and the time that has elapsed since we started this core routine. So let's just add these in. So that's going to be float time elapsed. We'll set that to zero. Next, we want to set in our target height. So let's call that target height. And this time we're going to use a ternary operator. So we can use our is crouching boolean, put the question mark. So if we're crouching, our target height is going to be our standing height because we're already crouching. We want to stand back up or else the colon we're going to use crouching height. Now we also want a reference to our current height. So that's a floor. Current height is equal to our character controller dot height. And then the same as above, but this time we actually want to get a target and current center point. So that's going to be a vector three target center. We'll set that equal to, and again, we're going to check is crouching. So if we are crouching, we want our standing center point. If we're not, we want our crouching center point. And finally, vector three current center is equal to character controller dot center. Now, the reason we need to cache those values is because when we actually start lerping over it, we need to know what we're going from, what we're going to, 
and for how long. And obviously we're going to be changing our centre point and our height during this next while statement. So we'll get so all sorts of errors if we try and use characterController.height inside of the lerp, because that's obviously going to be constantly changing. So let's get into our while statement. This is where we're actually going to perform the crouching action. So while our time elapsed is less than our time to crouch, which we've defined in our variables up top somewhere, time to crouch right there. So this entire crouch is going to take 0.25 seconds to complete. And what we want to do during this while statement, we want to set a character controller.height equal to mathf.lerp, and this takes three parameters, like I said before. We need the current height as the first, we want the target's height as the second, and then for our time step, the third parameter, we want to take our time elapsed and divide it by our time to crouch. So over a quarter of a second, we're going to go from whatever height we are to our target height, be it crouch to stand or stand to crouch. And we want to do exactly the same. We want to lerp that center point, but this time center is a vector three. So we need to call vector three dot lerp, but it works in exactly the same way. Instead of taking in floats, it takes in vector threes, but we'll just pass in our current center, our target center, and again, time elapsed divided by time to crouch. Then we want to make sure that we increment our time elapsed by the actual time that that frame has taken. So to do that, we do time elapsed plus equals time dot delta time, and then yield return null, which is just going to wait until the next frame before we continue doing that while statement. Perfect. So that should actually sort of work. But what I like to do when it comes to core routines is because the time to render a frame can vary fractionally, that can leave you with values that are either slightly below or slightly above the target values. And we don't want that. We want to have the exact values every time. So outside of our while statement, I'm just going to do a quick sanity check on this and make sure that my character controller height is equal to the target height and also character controller dot center is equal to my target center just makes things a little bit cleaner. And now the final thing we want to do in this inside this crouch stand method is toggle our is crouching to be its opposite form. So easy way of doing that, we can set is crouching equal to not is crouching. So that's just going to toggle for us automatically, whether or not we're currently standing or currently crouching. So let's just give this a quick try. We'll jump back to Unity. We see we have all of our parameters currently set up. We hit play left control, we drop down, left control again, we go up. But you may notice that for some reason, when we're crouched, we speed up. And that's because of the perspective of our camera to the ground. We see the horizontal lines, we're not actually going any faster, but it just looks like we are because we're down on the floor. But we want to kind of offset that and the fact that if your character's crouching, you're obviously going to be moving slower. So let's add another speed in here. So inside of our movement parameters, we can add in crouch speed. And this time I'm going to set this to half of walking speed, so 1.5. And this is where our is crouching boolean is going to come in handy. Because inside of our movement, our handle movement input, we're just checking if we're sprinting. So we can just amend this slightly by just adding an extra ternary operator as a second parameter. So the way this is going to work is, are we sprinting? Yes, use the sprint speed. If we're not, we'll check is crouching. If we are, then we'll use our crouch speed or else we'll just use our walk speed. So now if we cop and replace our Y value movement with that, head back over into Unity. So now we can sprint, and if we crouch, we go a lot slower. Back up, run, we can jump, and then back underneath here. The final thing that I want to show you how to do though, is checking for the ceiling when you crouch, because now if I press my crouch key and stand up, 
I'm going to clip through the ceiling. And obviously we don't want that. And the way that I'm going to show you is extremely simple. So inside of our crouch stand core routine, right at the very top, before we do anything else, I want to check if we are crouching, so is crouching, and then I want to ray cast up from where the character controller's head is, and I want to check if that hits anything. So we'll do a double ampersand, and we'll check physics.raycast from the player camera dot transform dot position we're going to shoot that ray up so that's going to be vector three dot up and we're going to limit it to one unit we're going to yield break which will just take us out of our core routine and the rest of this code won't even fire so let's just recap on that if we're already crouching and we press our crouch key that's going to try and stand so if we're crouching first thing we'll do we'll ray cast up and check if there's anything within one unit directly above us if there is we won't bother standing back up and we'll stay in that crouch position. So let's head on over and test that out. Okay, so if we crouch, we go under. If I press the control key while I'm under here, nothing happens. But when I come out and press control, I can stand back up extremely easily. Perfect. And that's it for crouching. So now we have sprinting, jumping and crouching as well as our standard first person movements and in the next video to make it look a little bit more dynamic i know some people don't actually like this but again we're going to wrap it in a functional feature toggle so we can turn it on and off if we like and that's going to be head bobbing so if that sounds interesting to you make sure you check out the channel next week for that tutorial but until then thanks for watching i'll see you soon Thanks for watching guys, if you like the content remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.